काल भैरव की जगदम्बे मात की बाबा जी In December of 2017, at 5.30 in the morning, I met an Indian man at the New Delhi train station. His name was Rahul. That's primo, my. That's primo. I had met Rahul a month earlier, 1,350 kilometers away in the southern Indian state of Kerala. At the time, we had both been retreating in a spiritual community known as Amar's Ashram. We had arranged to meet at the train station with a few other unknown companions and then travel up into the Himalayan state of northern India, known as Uttarakhand, the land of gods. A fitting name for a majestic land littered with Hindu temples and pilgrimage centres. The train ride was long, but the stunning views provided insight into the everyday rural Indian life. We got off the train in Kathkathom and drove for an hour and a half through narrow winding roads. Finally, we reached our destination at Haidakan Babaji's ashram. When we arrived, the ashram was already seven days into the ten day long festival of Babaji's celebration and worship. That night, I didn't get any footage of the festival, but over the next few days, I got some incredible shots. The next morning, I woke to the calm, slow-paced Himalayan lifestyle. Haidakan Babaji, simply called Babaji or Bole Baba by students and devotees, was a spiritual leader who appeared near the village of Haidakan in northern India. He taught publicly from when he was allegedly discovered at the foot of a cave in 1970 until his death in 1984. It is reported that after his discovery in 1970, Babaji spent 45 days meditating without food in a small temple on top of a mountain. Later, in 1971, Babaji, in a sworn testimony, convinced the judge of a court that he was the reincarnation of the old Babaji who was thought to have lived in the region from 1860 till 1922, thus giving him the right to use the ashrams in Kathgaria and Haidakan. From 1971 until his death in 1984, Babaji reportedly travelled across India, proclaiming his message of God and performing various sacred ceremonies. It was amazing to see that even 33 years after his death, people were still attending the 10 day long ceremony of Babaji worship. It was time to attend the daily purification ceremony, a three hour long event which involved chanting mantras and throwing fruits into the holy fire a ritual which was never clearly explained to me, but which I assumed was a method to both cleanse the soul of impurities and to surrender oneself to the high energies of the world.
अपने अपने गुरु माता पिता की बोले बाबा की सागर की After the purification ceremony, I was starving from expending all of my spiritual energy, so I went to go grab a free feed of the Babaji community. But before I could eat, I had to perform my karma yoga. In Hindi, karma yoga is known to be the discipline of selfless action as a way to spiritual perfection. It was my karma yoga to voluntarily help to shout the food for the hundreds of hungry Babaji devotees. It felt good to lend a hand, especially considering that like most ashrams in India, the Babaji ashram was completely free to stay at, along with three free meals a day. While the Babaji ashram and others like it are usually free, the devotees are expected to donate whatever they can afford. Finally, after everybody was served, I sat on the hard ground, squashed between two locals, and ate curry and chapatis with my bare hands, Indian style. Worship is no easy work, and I was exhausted. For the rest of the afternoon I slept. That night I managed to get some footage of the evening worship. The next morning, I woke at 4.30 for the daily Shandam ceremony, where sandalwood paste was applied to our foreheads by Man Sin, a man who knew Babaji closely. This was a compulsory practice for all those who visit the Babaji ashram. Instead of attending the midday purification ceremony again, as I did the previous day, I decided to go off on my own adventure down in the valley below. I'd spent practically the whole day exploring the unique Himalayan landscape before I realised that the sun had gone down. On my way back up the valley, I ran into a gang of wild baboons. Luckily, I was able to evade them without harm. Wild leopards are also known to live in the area, but I didn't see any. That night was the final night of the 10 days of worship. My time at the ashram had taught me a lot about personal responsibility and the importance of keeping in touch with the inner self. In general, the vibes of the ashram felt very conductive for high spiritual inspiration and for the reflection of one's own life. The ashram carried the energy of deep awe, strength, reunification and ultimately Babaji's infinite fragrance of being. Say ciao. <laughs> the next morning we packed our bags and set off for Cassidy. <laughs> Kismat ka
का खुल दरवाजा वक्त तेरा कब से है प्यासा वक्त तेरा कब से है प्यासा